leaving getting out of here thank god back to the country but um we're gonna stop at darlington on the way that'll be nice uh, check out darlington hopefully we can get a tour and uh learn a little bit about nuclear power and see how that works so i'm really excited for that that'll be nice guys The Bruce is over here. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah Pickering's there, right? The Pickering plant? Oh, sorry, it's at Concordant. It's right here. Right there? Right there yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the Bruce, yeah. And then you were there. Yep. And we're here, here now. now. And we'll be going like here, right? Yeah. Oh, and Deep River, that's where Deep the River. original nuclear was done. Yeah, yeah. Canadian Nuclear Laboratories is located up there. And they're going to have uh, Canada's first micro um reactor um, like a smaller version of an oh. smr just about ready to begin construction so they're i think they're waiting for the design approval and then they will um, submit their application to construct pickering could be doing two different things so there are eight units there yeah. um, units two and three have already been placed in a safe state so unit one and four on the A side are still generating electricity and the right. four units on the B side, five, six, seven, and eight, yep. they're still operating. So what the plan is that units one and four will shut down and uh, ultimately be placed in a safe state, which is the first phase of decommissioning. Okay. The B side, the five, six, seven, and eight reactors, they're currently undergoing an assessment for possible refurbishment. Right. So if they get the go-ahead for there, <laughs> that site could be going through a decommissioning for preparation and a refurbishment for continued operations. Oh. It was constructed in the 60s and came into operation in the 70s. Yeah, one of the first, wasn't it? It was one of the first. The yeah. Pickering A was the first commercial uh, reactors uh, built in, in Canada. Yeah, that was the can-do. Every um, reactor in Canada at this point is a can-do reactor. Yeah. The SMRs, which are um, going to be uh, brought into Canada, they are a different design, so right. they're not can-do. They're a um, like a pressurized water reactor. We have begun the site preparation for unit number one and on Friday we just received announcement and support from the province to uh, venture into units two three and four okay wow there could be three or total of four 300 megawatt um, um, modular reactors here on the Darlington site right. we're looking at having the first one operational by the end of this decade and because they're modular and we'll, we'll have um, perfected our um, preparation and construction on the first unit, yeah. subsequent ones won't take quite so long. Yeah. So they're looking at having the other three up and running by 2036 to 2038. Wow, that's yeah. not even that long. No. Yeah. Is the, is the, in the Pickering decommissioning time, is that because they have to let the radiation like it, kind of taper off and stuff? It, it's, that is part of it because there are components that do have a, a radioactive level. But through refurbishment, we have learned how to remove those components, um, volume reduce them and store them safely. And uh, so it's possible that the decommissioning process could move a little faster. Yeah, yeah. The 50 year period is when the site would be back to its original state. <sighs> okay, it that makes sense. Ultimately result in demolition of the, the ACE. And like remediation right. and stuff for the environment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what it's going to take. And um, it is worth knowing that from the moment the reactors were being built, OPG was putting money aside for decommissioning. So it's already been part of, once the station started um, generating income, yeah. a portion of that income was being put aside to for decommissioning. decommissioning. So this is a long, the, the, the Ontario is well vested in long-term nuclear. And uh, it's at the, um, the province, uh, which is our, our primary stakeholder, our shareholder, I should say, they um, are committed to expanding the nuclear fleet. Because middle of last week, they announced that Bruce Power 
is investigating the um, environmental assessment and site selection for Canada's first uh, large nuclear build in 30 years. Wow. So they're looking at building a, um, a facility that would generate 4. Um, well, 4,800 megawatts, which is Whew. enough for yeah. uh, almost 5 million homes. Wow. So all the power from here, because I was, I was, we were talking in the car, we were following the power lines on the 4.7, does it? Does it go to Toronto and all the surrounding area? Or like Elect electricity is one of those things. You put it down to the wires. Yes, we generate uh, when we're in, in full operation. Currently, we have two units that are operating. Two of them are in uh, refurbishment. But when full operation is happening here, we produce 20% of the electricity, which is equivalent to um, the population of Toronto. Do we is sell that, any to the Americans at all? Or? Right now, we are not. There was a time that we had excess. But the demand for electricity is increasing rapidly. Yeah, well, the whole electric car thing, right? That is a big part. Yes, yeah. And then so, yeah. the electrification of um, other services, like so many transit systems are looking at going 100% electric. Toronto yep. is going to be doing yep. that. BC has been talking yes. about it. Yeah, exactly. So the demand for electricity is going to, and has already begun to increase we do not have surplus anymore. That's why the province yeah. is saying we yeah. need, need to get ahead of more. this. We need yeah. more of these, yes. And we are still behind. So in Ontario, nuclear only accounts for about 15% of the power in Canada. So BC has hydro, Quebec is, is essentially all hydro. Yep. And then the other provinces, it's a combination of hydroelectric, or or fossil so um, or, yeah. and they're still yeah. burning some coal uh, further coal uh, really further east wow. there's yeah. still coal mines in new brunswick yeah well new brunswick they have a new, there's a nuclear reactor in new brunswick Point, isn't yeah there? Yeah. The yeah yeah but it's it's the it's a single one um so it, it providing a significant portion of their electricity but they also are looking into small modular reactors. They want to reduce their dependency on fossils. They don't want to burn. Yeah, oil totally. Oil and gas totally. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, Quebec at one time was a um, a surplus producer, selling a lot of their electricity to New York State. They are also in a surge in demand. Yeah, for sure. So they're going to be. They are in some long-term contracts. They're going to find themselves in uh, some challenging positions as to whether they can um, meet their own demand and meet their contractual obligation. Um, OPG, uh, we own and operate uh, about 80 um, hydroelectric facilities in the U.S. Really? And we're not shipping that electricity oh. Canada-wide, so we're producing down there. So We produce we, for them down there. Yeah, so one oh, of the okay. we were able to yeah, yeah. stop sending there is because we transferred the contracts. Yeah. You, you probably just use the uranium in Canada, right? You yes, we to, get it yeah, from Saskatchewan. We purchase it on the world market for the world price, but the production and sourcing is, is mm -hmm. still in Canada, but it's based on the world market. We're very fortunate. <laughs> yeah, we are. Canada We're very fortunate. The third largest reposit, uh, repository of um, high quality uranium. Mm -hmm. And so we have enough that we can continue to uh, supply our electricity needs well into the future uh, with what we have. That's amazing. Um, that, is. That, that is. That's actually yeah. really nice to know. What's yeah. really interesting is Australia is one of the world's richest uranium um, deposits, and they do not have a nuclear generation program. They export all their uranium right now. Um, mo a lot of it is going to countries that like China and Korea and India. They have nuclear France, reactors. France, I think, has nuclear power too. Yes, and and so to the European countries. <laughs> Uh, providing them with their uranium but um, right now uh, um, that they export it but they don't have a strong uh, support for electricity well I think I think it's incredible that there's a visitor center here that you guys like because I was like really want to like learn about this right yeah. it's totally. really cool that there's like a place you can come and like learn and about we it we have uh, we get uh, people who are uh, camping at the local provincial park just driving by and, and popping in 
we've got students who, when they're on their way to checking out their colleges and universities, Durham College and um, Ontario Tech University both have nuclear programs, so students who are going to school there will come perfect, here. It's a perfect way to get a job, right? Yeah. Right now in Ontario with the refurbishment project at Darlington, there's a refurbishment project happening at Bruce Power. And then with the potential of um, uh, Pickering B, uh, four units doing refurbishment, we are in a desperate um, need for trades. Need for yeah. boiler makers, welders, uh, pipe fitters, millwrights, and uh, electricians. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a big, big demand. The demographics within Ontario Power Generation is quite high. Um, we are um, probably close to the 44, 45 year mark. Really? So wow. we have uh, more people closer to retirement than we have young people. It's the same thing happening in the trades. Um, we've got uh, people on the verge of retirement and the apprentices just aren't there. The challenge is uh, parents need to be more receptive and more supportive of young men and women taking up trades, tools yep. instead of a uh, tablet. Any time that we have a, a group of students, and we do an open house um, every year, so this year it's going to be on Saturday, September the 16th, and we set up, we call them booths, but really it's just people walking around talking to people in the industry. So we have welders, boiler makers, talking to young people. We put up a sign, uh, have you considered trades? And then they have a chance to speak to them. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the best ways um, for families, and this is the whole thing, it's, got, it's a family decision. It's one person's career, but the family makes the decision. Where, where are you gonna be going to school? If I'm paying for it, I'll tell you where you're gonna go. There needs to be more parents um, listening yeah. to um, what's happening in the real world. Yes, we still need um, the, the teachers and the nurses and the doctors and stuff like that, but we need people who have the aptitude to consider doing uh, the trades so that we can um, continue to build these reactors and service those reactors and um, what do you take mean? the province forward. Well, especially boiler boiler making and pipe fitting is not for everybody. No, it's not. Skill. Because you guys, well, you got, you're welding um, exotic metals too. Mm -hmm. I can imagine Inconel and yep. lots yep. of weird copper nickel and stuff like that. Like yeah. you don't just, like a lot of guys can weld, a lot of guys can't weld that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, that's so, right. It does take Same as steel very, too, yeah. right? Like there's it takes all a very, very uh, skilled and, um, and, and very, uh, I guess you call them attention to detail kind of person. Yes. To do that. Well, your tolerances are like thousands, thousands of an inch, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You don't have much clearance. No. Not on. A, you wouldn't want to on a reactor. No. No. Right. And yeah. yeah. Exactly right. And that's so the um, for the when we began doing the refurbishment um, project and uh, the, the installation of the new um, feeder pipe, which is the the pipes that carry the high pressure, high temperature water up to the reactors to make the steam. Um, we were suffering from a eight and a half, nine percent uh, well failure rate over the course of um, just the first unit. Um, they had to do a lot of, of cutting out and, and replacement. We're down to uh, a less than um, one percent. So I, mean, I would imagine a lot of people in your supply chain are exactly the kind of people that recruit these trades to service third party, right? Yep. Um, there's companies that are uh, servicing our major vendors, so yep. they may not necessarily carry the nuclear qualification uh, that is is held by the company that supplies to us. Right. But um, they're all part of it. And the other thing about the uh, refurbishment project, 96 cents for every dollar is staying here in the province of Ontario. Nice, that's good. We, prior to doing the refurbishment project, the, the nuclear industry in Ontario was predominantly a, a service industry. The, the companies that maintain their qualifications to work in nuclear we're providing services, um, um, maintenance and stuff like that for us. When we went into a, 
we call it a construction project because we're removing and rebuilding. Mm -hmm. It re rejuvenated the, um, the nuclear um, industry and supply chain. They're looking at us now from, uh, for isotopes because we are um, installing, during the refurbishment project, we're installing the, um, the ability to radiate and, and uh, create isotopes for medical uh, procedure. We've always had cobalt, mm -hmm. and now we have molybdenum-99, we have helium-3. The molybdenum-99 uh, was installed in December of last year. They've done their first harvest. The material is being evaluated by both Health Canada and the FDA in the States. When we get approval, that's going to be North America's only source of that um, isotope and it's used in 30 million um, medical assessments every year. And we haven't had that uh, capability since the, um, the research uh, Deep reactor in Deep River yeah. shut down. So now we're going to be doing that. Because that, that was the only plant at one point when it came offline, wasn't it? Yep. And, and yeah, but it had, it had reached end of life. That, it that had. Was the reason it was shot. Yes. What's, what's the lifespan on like these guys here? 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. So um, uh, the Darlington first units came into operation in 1990 to 1993. And um, so we were at the point we had to start refurbishing them. So we're, um, we are just weeks away from bringing unit three on. So two of our units will be done. Unit two is finished, unit three in a few weeks. And then uh, by the end of 2026, um, units one and units four will be done as well. So we'll have all four of our units up running, running again. like almost 100%, eh? Absolutely 100%. Yeah. So they must already be like making plans and stuff to like be like when because this facility is going to have to be decommissioned, they're going to have to have a new one to replace it, right? So it's quite, right. it's probably quite a musical chairs thing, eh? Like it, it is. Our refurbishment has gone so well, knock on wood, um, and we're um, we've proven that it can be done. Uh, safely with quality on schedule and on budget that there has already been discussion of um, Darlington refurbishment 2.0 uh, knowing that there are some components that will have to be replaced like steam generators mm -hmm. yeah. but the, um, um, the the grid is is here we have the, the, the land um, the there are some um, systems that are as long as you maintain them, they'll continue well, to that's, operate. That's the thing, right? So, you got to do the you got to do the maintenance. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna exactly. it's gonna come and haunt you. So, right? and they're talking about uh, new nuclear, which means they build it thirty years later, they'll refurbish it, run it for another thirty years. It's uh, it's creating that domino effect. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, I'm glad someone mentioned that you were here because we. Uh, we don't often hear the door open, so uh, <laughs> and unless somebody goes, hello. Well, and thank you for like having this facility too, because it's really You're nice to be able welcome. to come and look. Because yeah. I said, like, how often do you get to go look at nuclear power? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. thank so. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. South 401, and it'll take you into the uh, Energy Road. Take you into the park. Energy Road West. Yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. More to come later, but. Phenomenal. That was a phenomenal experience.